Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I'm home tonight in my home little home repair workshop. I have a little project to do. Uh, I've been setting up shelves in here and I've been accumulating more and more stuff. Uh, lots of projects, picking up some parts and a few repair jobs to do for people. Uh, I even picked up a heap of old radio valves recently. But what I'm going to do is, this is part setting up and part future test equipment. I have up here a late 1980s Technic, Technics amplifier and a Marantz tuner, probably a similar age, might be that might be early 90s perhaps. Uh, great units, really good. I've got some workshop speakers up in the top corner. There's one up there and one on the other side. And I've got the wires running down the corner. What I want to do is have underneath this shelf... Uh, like junction boxes for the speaker wires to come in and hook up to the amp and then run some other speaker wire out to the main shed for some other speakers. Uh, it does have a main and remote speaker option. But I want to use the amplifier as a test amp for when I'm repairing a CD player or another tuner or something that I have to run through the amplifier. Uh, likewise, I'll probably use the tuner as a test tuner for when I'm repairing an amplifier. And the speakers themselves, whilst in normal mode here, they'll be just the workshop radio speakers. They'll also be available for test speakers for when I'm fixing something and need extension speakers. So to enable me to do all that, I've grabbed a couple of metal brackets. Now these are actually the ends of an old fluorescent tube housing. They're like a powder coated steel. They're quite strong. They look quite neat. And I'm thinking if I can mount them up underneath this shelf, which will give a nice little fascia plate to coordinate all the wiring options. So I've got a couple of speaker connectors, which are off some oh, some stereo that I scrapped for e-waste. So I've salvaged those. And I'm thinking if we can have one as that connects straight to the workshop speakers up top, and then the other one will be connected through to the amp and I can just put wire links between the two when I'm just playing the normal radio in the shed but I can then pull the links out and plug something into the speakers if I need the speakers or plug uh, if I'm testing speakers I can then plug them into there which will go straight to the amplifier and the other one's going to be a very very similar setup with some RCA jacks, jacks that I've got off circuit boards from the e-waste again and basically I'm just going to try and set up uh, an input side and an output side. So again, if I need to plug something in through my amp and my speakers, I have an inside. And if I need to, say, have the uh, output from the tuner that I want to plug into an amplifier, I can have the output side. Um, so that's the plan. Just repurposing, basically repurposing secondhand stuff there. I'm going to cut out or drill out some holes to mount these. Uh, I'll have to drill, cut out some square sections to mount the speaker connectors. And then we'll wire it all up and they should sit nice and neat behind the brackets. Easily accessible under my little uh, stereo setup here. So it's been quite a while. I thought I'd get, better get back to this project. I've marked out the sections here for the speaker uh, jacks. So we'll be cutting out that section and that section. Um, I thought I might just use the angle grinder and cut down the sides. Uh, it's fairly thick gauge steel, but I recently acquired a Dremel and I featured it in another video I did and they've got a lot of little handy little um, fittings and accessories for it, little buffing wheels and sanding discs and these are little grinding wheels. I'm not sure if this metal will be too heavy for it, so we'll give it a go and see what happens.
Well, I must say I'm pretty impressed with that. It's um, It cuts really well. That's reasonably thick gauge metal. That will clean up quite nicely. The only thing I have to be careful of is a couple of times I probably ground a bit long and the paint just started to bubble and discolour. But uh, I'm not worried about that. It's going to look fine when it's finished. So yeah, that was great. I didn't expect that to do it quite as well as it did. So three cheers for the Dremel. That's come up pretty good. A uh, little bit sort of shoddy on the corners. Uh, the perfectionist in me wants to do it again, but hey, it's only uh, it's only basically a workshop prop. And uh, these clip in there nicely. They were both actually the same dimensions. And that will work brilliantly. There's plenty of room for the, the levers to flick down to insert wires. All we need to do is secure these to this bracket now. And what I'll probably do is just run a really fine drill bit just through the mounting tabs. And that will come through the front and then I can open out the hole and screw back in. So that works great. We'll just have to make up some short jumper, lead, jumper links to go between the two. I'll drill a couple of mounting holes and the speaker one will be ready. And we'll have to do some round holes, some, drill some bigger holes for the uh, RCA jacks. Now, trying to get nice, neat holes equally spaced on this panel and the holes so that I don't have to file them out uh, too much for them to sit neatly is a bit of a challenge. And I've also noticed that this one is actually a very slightly smaller square than what this one is. I don't think that'll really make a difference. I don't even remember what these pieces came off. There was some uh, amplifier or stereo that I scrapped. But I think the best way, rather than trying to do really detailed measurements on onto the panel, I think the best way is I'm going to use a bit of carbon paper. I've got an old docket book here. In fact, it's an unused one. And it's got a couple of sheets of carbon paper at the back. Um, all us oldies certainly know how carbon paper works with receipt books and docket books. So a lot of the uh, a lot of the youngies these days probably never have used carbon paper. So we'll take a sheet of that out, and I'm basically going to use it to transfer the pattern of the sockets onto some white card, and then we can tape the card uh, in the right position over here and drill through it. And we should be uh, should have a fairly neat job that way. Okay, we'll put the carbon paper across the white card with the the carbon side down, of course. And we'll put this on one end. It doesn't really matter go really matter where we go because we'll cut the section out. And I'm just going to put a little bit of scrap timber on the top. And once we've got a bit of pressure on there, we don't want it to move. I'll give it a bit of a tap with a hammer. And hopefully that leaves a decent mark on the white card. Oh yeah, look at that. That's going to be great. Now this is fairly thin card. It's, it's only just thicker than paper. And we'll be able to tape that on. We've got a really good imprint of the distance between the holes. I'll do the other one. And then we'll cut these out and position them on the bracket. And I'll be able to run a drill through them. The other one actually came out a lot better, as you can see. It was a very clear mark. So I, I basically put a dot in the center of each circle, ruled some cross lines measured out equal distance on each side to make squares. They are slightly different sizes, as I mentioned before, and I've just positioned them basically by eye on there. They've probably had a little bit. I'm not worried about being millimeter perfect because uh, once the paper squares are gone and we just have the holes, it will look close enough. So that worked quite well. Now, what I want to do is center punch in each of these circles and also in the middle because our retaining screw goes in the middle and then we can get the drill going. So now I've center punched all our holes and the idea of center punching for those that haven't had a lot of experience is it um, provides a spot for the drill to start so that when you, you know, if you start to drill a flat piece of metal the drill can wander everywhere. I can't get this tape off now. Uh, so we don't need our guides anymore and we can see it's made some nice indentations into the middle where we can drill out the holes. 
We'll start with a small drill bit just as a pilot hole. We won't do the center to mounting ones yet, we'll just do the plug holes. Okay, now to find a drill bit to take those out to the size of our RCA plugs. Uh, and they measure a whisker over 8mm, around about 8mm. So we'll find an 8mm drill and we'll drill all those holes out. This one should do the trick. There we go, all done. They're uh, a little bit rough and jagged. I'll have to clean them up with a little file. And it's quite a lot of burrs on the back. But uh, they should be around about the right size. If they're not quite, a file will bring them up nicely. Yep, that looks like it's almost going to go through there. I just use a much larger drill bit just to take the burrs off the back. We're not really drilling through, we're just cleaning the, the rough edge of the hole. Now, I've cleaned the holes up fairly well. The 8mm drill bit was probably... I probably needed to go the next size, so I had to do a little bit of filing. But that didn't hurt because it gave me a chance to take all the burrs off. And now they push through nice and firmly. Fairly neat holes, and they're going to work really well. Now, for some reason, it might be an optical illusion, but the marks that I had for the centre for the mounting screws look to be a little bit high on each. I thought they should be right in the middle. So just to play it safe, I'm going to drill a pilot hole back through from the other side, and then we'll have exactly the right spot. But anyway, that's working quite well. Happy with that. So we'll get it cleaned up, we'll drill those pilot holes and then we're almost ready to start wiring this thing up. I've already done, as you can see, the mounting holes to go underneath the shelf and I've done the same on the other one as well. So I drilled out those centre holes and found some self-tappers that screw into the fittings quite well. So we'll pull those up now. It should self-tap into the plastic housing and pull these jacks through the holes and firm them up. It's feeling like it's tightening up very well. For some reason, the one on the right-hand side, the jacks are a little bit longer than the ones on the left, but that will still be fine. That's pulling up beautifully. So it looks nice and neat. Now, I did um, alter the jacks so that the right, the red ones were on the right-hand side, which will be for the right channel, and the white ones on both sides are on the left-hand side for the left channel. Uh, that's the way I've always liked to do it. I don't know if there's any particular uh, ruling on that. All I need to do now is uh, just get some sort of label so that this side might say amplifier and this side probably tuner. I think that's how we'll work it. So once I find them, we can stick them on, uh, wire it up, and pretty well just get it all working. Okay, it's been quite a while since I started this project and I'm finally getting somewhere again. Um, and just an, as an example, you may remember what this shop workshop looked like at the start of this video. Well, it's filled up a lot more. So it has been a while. I've got projects going on everywhere, but I wanted to get this one finished. I don't need to apologise to you guys because you're looking at it as if I did it all in one day. So I've managed to print off some labels for these um, brackets. And as you can see, I've also made up some leads just some speaker wire which I've tinned on the ends, easy to remove, and these ones were just your normal audio cables that I've shortened, and I've joined them and put some heat shrink tubing on them. Uh, so now we've just got to uh, peel these off. Now I've printed this on sticker paper, and I'll put a link underneath, I got this through Amazon, I'll put a link underneath which you can go and find it, it's, uh, it's really good stuff to use. Now this is 25 sheets, you can get different qual uh, quantities, and it's going to last me a long time because I just printed this down the bottom. I'll cut off what I need and I can use the rest of this sheet for uh, for future projects. Uh, so I'm just going to cut that off now and stick them on here. And next stage will be to make up some leads that go to the back of the amp and the tuner and perhaps a CD player. And just wire them up and we can mount them then up on our on our shelf here and then I can put the amp back up and the tuner and I will have a CD player together as well. And the project's coming to a conclusion. We're just about finished. I've got these mounted up under the shelf. I reckon they look really good. The, um, the labelling worked well. I might just suggest if you do it though, use tweezers to put them on. No matter how, how clean your fingers are, it always gets a bit grubby underneath. 
but look, I'm pretty happy with that. It's only really for uh, for labeling for my benefit. It's not like it's a restoration on something, so I'm not going to be too fussy. But I think it's worked out really well. I've got all the leads back up through here. They're all labeled. So I can now set up the um, all the components that I'm going to put there. Uh, the speakers, I've color coded them just with some heat shrink tubing so I know which is the right channel and the left channel. So uh, it's all wired up and soldered behind there. I will tidy the wires up a little bit once I get the rest of the stereo up. So let's put that together now and give it a test. And here we go. Project all finished. I've set the corner up again as you can see. I've got the amp, I've got the tuner and I've got a CD player. Uh, it all works really well. I had it on just before. Didn't do any wiring um, mistakes, so that's good. Uh, the amp's already on. What do we got? Tuner. Sounds great through the speakers. We better not leave it play too long. And the CD, I think I've got a rock and roll one in there. So there you go. It all works brilliantly through here. I can unplug any individual component. I can um, use the speakers or I can... Uh, drive some speakers from my amp so that's just going to add to the convenience when I'm testing gear and now it gives me uh, really good workshop music when I'm in the mood and I can listen to the footy when I'm out here at night so pretty happy with that a project using totally reclaimed items remembering these brackets were off fluoro lights uh, the wiring was scrap wiring I had the speaker jacks and the RCA jacks were actually off old hi-fi units that I scrapped out and uh, all I need to do is just tidy up the wiring under there. And uh, yeah, great repurposing project. And it's going to be really handy in my workshop. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.